Are we heading back to austerity? Possibly. With the Labour leadership failing to offer an alternative economic position or an alternative, and the BBC seems to be looking for an austerity excuse for what may come up in the future. Oh, it's just enormous, Joe. I mean, it's just absolutely eye-wateringly enormous. And if you think of the debate that we had really from the late noughties all the way through to the 2015 election, you know, that was defined by how is the country going to pay back what we had to borrow in the credit crisis. This is that and some. OK, this is the credit card, the national mortgage, everything absolutely maxed out enormous levels of the country basically being in the red. And as Faisal says, it's not really sort of a surprise. You know, we've all known that seeing businesses shut, shops shut, pubs shut, people stuck at home, the economy basically put into a deep freeze for months on end. But seeing it spelt out like this in black and white is really, really stark. It's really, really important. And it just seems to me that today, in a sort of political sense, is maybe a more scary equivalent of that moment when the coalition took over in 2010 and David Laws, the Chief Secretary of the Treasury, leaked that note he'd been left from Liam Byrne mm, saying, there is no, no money, money left. left. Mm. This is Rishi Sunak standing and telling the country for the next few years, there is really no money. And of course, that's going to mean hugely difficult decisions in the years to come. But also the point that, Faisal, you were making this morning, um, we're not even through this, OK? No. This is the beginning of the economic emergency, perhaps the ending almost of the health emergency if the vaccines come good, as people hope for. But this is really only the beginning of the second act and the third act, how we pay it back, is not is still a way off. Laura Koonsberg, with respect, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? The economic illiteracy coming out from her mouth and the BBC is astonishing. She's talking about credit cards being maxed out. When we talk about debt, debt is not the same thing as it is to you or me. Yanis Varoufakis put this expertly. The independence between uh, total income and total expenditure exists within our lives. I've got £10 in my pocket. I could go get a pint. I would say three, probably more four quid now. I could go get a pint and now I've got £6 left in my account. I could choose not to get a beer and I still got £10 because my expenditure is completely independent of my income, right? I get paid for my job, comes into my account and whatever I spend it in, whatever I spend it on, excuse me, has no relevance to what I got paid from my job. Now, when it comes to public economies, government economies, uh, the there is no independence between expenditure and income. So, for example, if that if the government just refused to spend any money, would that mean that our finances are suddenly in order? Does that mean, oh, look, we've got no expenditure, but look, look at all these tax receipts coming in. No, society would break down in chaos very soon. Why? Well, because we still need our public services. We need to pay staff. Governments need to spend to generate income. Yes, this year has been unprecedented of how much it's spent because of the furlough scheme. But if it didn't spend that money, what would happen? Well, of course, maybe lots of people would die. Uh, some conservatives probably would like that. Dominic Cummings thinks that's probably necessary. You need people to have employment. You need people to have money to spend it. Okay, businesses can thrive when you've got customers. <laughs> if you're getting little to no money, you're going to stay at home or you're going to buy the cheapest possible thing. Small businesses are going to close. Big businesses are going to take huge hits in their profits. So the idea that, oh, look, we've maxed out on our credit card. We haven't got any money left. Embarrassing from the media. Laura Koonsberg is one of their top journalists, if you call it journalists, and she's getting paid a lot of money to essentially spew Tory propaganda. After 10 years of austerity, are we in any better position? No, we're in a lot worse position. Still got low wages. We've got terrible jobs, not good quality paid jobs, but precarious work, zero hours contract, crumbling infrastructure. Productivity is going down. Wages, like I said before, are flatlining. And that's been happening for 40 years because of neoliberalism, but especially the last 10 years. We've also got the collapse of the high street, big retailers are going down the drain. So guys out there, expect austerity on steroids. The amount of money we spend on people to keep this economy going, the working class, 
or, and the middle class paying for this pandemic, even though we should be taxing the wealthy a little bit more. And they can do this because the BBC and lots of the media, because they don't know what they're talking about, the fact that they are uh, the uh, journalists like Laura Kingswick is in the position, it talks more about friends in high places rather than competency or intelligence, because they're pushing this narrative that we need to make cutbacks, blah, blah, blah. Then Conservatives, once again, politics on easy mode, can do just that and have the consent from the public. We can get the very wealthy, especially companies like Amazon, who have profited from this pandemic. They can pay for it. Austerity has never been an economic necessity, just a political choice.